David Edward and Chad Miller discuss Chad's new book, The Prisoner of Fear. Chad, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? It's good. Good to see you again. Yeah, good, good talking to you. Yeah. So, Chad, I understand that you have written a book. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, I've written a book uh, called The Prisoner of Fear. The Prisoner of Fear. Uh, I'm going to guess if I ask you what uh, genre that is, it's going to be a scary one. Yeah, it's a, it's in the horror genre. Um, it's a mystery, um, but it's also um, yeah, it's spooky and has some horror elements to it, of course. Okay, and how do you land on that title? Um, there's different aspects of it. Um, there's literal. Um, there's a prisoner in it, um, and of course, um, he or she is very fearful of the situation. And also, um, a lot of the characters are prisoner to their own inner fears as well. Okay. All right. And, and what, what inspired you to write the book? What was it that was going on in your head that you decided you had up here that you had to get, you know, out there? Well, it all started from a, a short story. Um, so I was watching um, a series called uh, Penny Dreadful. And in that series, um, uh, the main character was um, under a spell or getting exercise. And I had the idea, even though she was the evil part of that because she was um, being possessed, uh, I had the idea of the caretaker um, being forced to make evil decisions to care for that um, person in distress. So I wrote a short story uh, called Mother Hen, and it was one of the, my uh, best works that, you know, to date um, when I wrote it. And I, I didn't want it to end there. So I, I shelled it for a couple months and um, thought about it and kind of like a, like a seed kind of grew. Yeah. So that was, it's pretty much in the middle um, elements of that story are in the middle of the book. Um, but like I said, it grew from there. That's what, you know, I, I, I've, the, the good ideas are the ones that stick around, right? right. And they just kind of, kind of nod at you now. So how long did it take you just to write the short story? Short story took me, I would say two to three weeks, two, three weeks. Um, okay. Yeah, about three to 4,000 words. Okay. And then the, how long did it take you to write the overall book? A long time. Um, I would say three, four years. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, work full time, have three right. kids. Um, so yeah, time is, is one of my biggest challenges in writing. Yeah. Well, that, that's a big undertaking three or four years with kids and a job and all that. How did you stay focused on it and not let it just fade away and become one of those things? You know, um, I try, well, I thought about it every day. So on my, you know, when your quiet times alone, um, driving to work in the bathroom, um, <laughs> shower. Yeah, it's always in my mind. And right. um, I tried at least to dedicate um, uh, at least three, three to five times a week um, to write, um, to sit down and write. Um, and usually I did it um, when, you know, of course, when I didn't have work and when the kids um, weren't around. So usually uh, I'm a night owl. So night owl. middle of the night and I work well with horror. So I was going to say you're writing horror in the middle of the night. That's um, now is, is the book super scary, would you say, or is it just disturbing or, 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 or what? A little bit of both. Um, it's not like a slasher type like the Freddy Krueger's. I mean, there, there, there are places for that um, in, in the world, um, but this is more cerebral, I would say. So you I get it, it, it's uh, written in um, the um, ep epistolary style, which means um, uh, in a series of letters, diary entries, articles. Oh, wow. Um, so Interesting. You get, you get in the head of several of the different characters and you, you see their fear. Um, so I think that's the most creepy, scary part of it is to see their response to the elements or the spooky elements that are going around. And then there are, you know, there are monsters and, and things like that in it as well. Um, but that's more to the side. Um, the real um, uh, creepy element is within the character's heads. In the character's head. So did you, I mean, so that, that's a lot of um, material to coordinate to make a coherent story out of. Did, did you outline it first? I mean, or did you like write the diaries first? Or what, what did the process look like of kind of getting, getting the structure of the book together? Um, outlines work for some. Um, for me, I don't care for them. Okay. I find them too limiting. Um, it's, it takes on, the story is, has a life of its own. Um, so if you make an outline, you kind of box yourself in. Um, and yes, I had, you know, the ending in mind, I had certain major events in mind, but sometimes the story kind of, uh, was alive and, um, the characters are leaving, living, breathing things. Um, so I didn't want to suffocate them with an outline. And once you start writing, it kind of, sometimes it goes on into a different direction where you didn't expect. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, um, I had ideas of, 
main uh, plot points and the end, um, but a lot in the middle kind of um, was, you know, let the characters drive me. I, that's the, the, you just described my style exactly. Um, I, I, the only thing I would add is what I do is I try and pr- tell myself a story that I can remember as like I lived it, like a memory, and then I kind of write it out. But I'm just like you. I, I, write, I, I set the book up. I know, I know the end I want, or at least I know where I want the characters to be at the end. Um, and then, yeah, you drop good characters into an interesting situation, and you just make sure they make – I always make sure they make good decisions. Now, okay, I have a question for you. One of the tropes in horror is in order for it to really work, the characters have to make bad decisions, right? You've, like there's the, the commercial where they all run into the chainsaw shed and don't get in the starting, you know, get, get in the running car, all that kind of stuff. How did you handle that in, in your book for the characters? Did you try and uh, just no, what, what, you know, have I, that? I, I try to throw them into chaos. Okay. Um, so I let the environment be the chaotic part, not their own bad decision making. So you throw them into... Um, a situation where it's inescapable and to see how they work it out rather than them to create that situation on their own. Right. Um, I think I, I try to stay away from cliches like that. So you see like the slasher movie and you say, oh, no, no, don't go in there. And you're, you're saying that yeah. to yourself. Um, that's a common th- um, um, element in a lot of horror. Um, it works well, um, but I wanted to stay away f- from the cliche. I didn't want my reader um, to have that expectation. I, I wanted to hit them from a different angle. I think that's good. I think I think that makes for a better book, better characters, better story, the whole thing, right? Because um, when you when you see those, even in the horror movies, it takes you out of it a little bit. Um, now, maybe in the movies, that's a it's relief for someone who might be too scared or whatever. But uh, I think I think the way you did it is is the way to do it. Did did you write a draft first and then revise the draft, or, or what did that look like? I, I kind of edit as I go along. Um, so I write, um, even though it looks like crap on page the first time you write it just get the idea out, get it on page, no matter what it is. Um, let it sit for a day, come back and look at it. And then you kind of edit as you go along. Of course, like punctuation grammar, um, yeah, but more, yeah. um, you know, more of the story um, and word for word to make the, uh, every sentence has to be eloquent. So Mac, Max Roach is a is a, a, a drummer, a jazz drummer. And he, um, he stated that um, it's good to play fast, but make every beat count. And right. I try to make every sentence count as well. I think that's, I, I do everything you do, except I might not have the care that you have for a particular sentence. Um, but I, I, I write this. Now, do, do you read, like, would you write something yesterday and then read it today it, to get yourself back into where you were? Or how, how what do you definitely. do that? Yeah. yeah okay. So, yeah, I'll reread um, at least what I wrote the day before. Um, and when I finish a chapter, I'll reread the whole chapter before going into the next one. We have, we have, uh, that's exactly how I do it. It took me, now, now this is your first book, right? Sort of. I did write another novel beforehand. Um, I didn't love it, um, so I didn't really pursue it. I, see. Um, I liked the idea of it, and I actually am reworking it now. Um, but this was the first one I fell in love with. This was my, you know, my masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, good luck. I'm sure. How, how did you develop that process that you talked about? Um, it just. I mean, I've been writing for 25 years. Okay. Uh, mainly short stories. Okay. Uh, so I had the same process with the short stories. So each chapter to me felt like. A short story within itself okay uh, so I, I took the same approach as i did with all the short stories that i've written in the past that's interesting i just because for me I, I started off watching all the internet videos and all that stuff and that's the, the they, that's like w- w- the way you write which is the way i write now is the opposite of any advice you you get out there so it took me a long time to come up with that process yeah i mean they're, they're, i mean that's the single hard thing with the internet um there's so much information out there so you don't know what's you know, what's useful, what's not useful, what's the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it. I think it just for each writer, they have their yeah. own process. So it has to, it has to be organic. You can't force it. I think that's right. And yeah, that's right. But yeah, what, the way you describe it is, is I think it's the best way. When I, my first book, I wrote the, the, the classic way. I wrote a draft and I tried to go back and revise it. It was, it was a nightmare. First off, it's too big. I can't remember what stuff's going on. And I'm a better writer now that I finished it. So when I go back and work on stuff towards the front, it's slightly different in style. You know, so it was just a nightmare. But yeah. when I do it the way you just described, linearly, um, it just worked for me. I, it just works really well. So I'm glad, I'm glad that you're the first person I've talked to uh, that ha- shares that same style. So that's just it's wildly interesting to me. Yeah, it's something I read in the book, learned. It's just... The way, it is. the way the way it is, it's yeah. Me. So you know, there's no right or wrong way. I don't think it's just no for the individual writer. 
Now, now I know three or four years is, is um, a while, but did you set goals? Did you write on, like, did you try and write so many words a, a day or a week, you know, in your, in your three or four or five sessions? No, no, I, no I just try to not to get the idea lost. Um, right. that's, that's a struggle I'm facing now. So now that I have a publisher uh, for my next one, I have deadlines and that's new. So that's the scary part now. Before I had all the time in the world. Um, right. I just wanted right. to make the best story that we could. Um, and I think I accomplished that. Well, and I, I try not to give out advice, but I do, I'll give you, I'm going to get, I'm going to give advice, which is, yeah, you're, if so, if this book is a huge hit, it's good to have another one, you know? Yeah. 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 No, I have a lot, I have a lot, uh, I have a lot in the tank. I have a lot. In the okay. Tank. Good. Good. <laughs> now, now during your writing process, did you ever get stuck, you know, writer's block, that kind of thing? Uh, for me, um, when I'm within a chapter, no, um, it's, it flows. Um, I can't almost stop. Sometimes I have to stop myself from writing uh, yeah. to make it uh, more concise. Um, Cause I don't want to write a thousand, you know, page epic. Um, right. But for me, when the new chapter begins, especially in the way I wrote it, each chapter or each sub chapter, it goes into a different person. I had to switch my mind. I almost kind of, you know, how people method act. I almost method, right. I try to get into that character's head. So it was hard to get that, sub chapter or new chapter going once i i finished someone's voice to start a new voice that was the hardest part for me Interesting. Um, it was almost painful to start yeah you know, just had yeah. to force yourself just to, like get something on the page and then once you did once you got in the character's head and see their point of view then you can't stop and then you know on on and on and on and you can't stop right right that this yeah people will ask me sometimes you know are, are you this character are you that character i'm like i'm like i'm all the characters good and bad flaws and strengths whatever you know um, and I'm none of them too, you know, so it's, yeah, but, but is when you're writing it, you have to be, kind of be that character in that moment. Um, so that's an interesting shift. Uh, so, listen, so you didn't get stuck and you think, well, you didn't get stuck, but you had hard time shifting point of view sometimes. Um, and just, and your solution to it was just to start writing something. If just that what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like ripping off a bandaid. Um, yeah. you know, you're looking at the bandaid. You don't want it to come off. Like, uh, you, you don't want to, uh, uh procrastinate, um, to just, just do it. Um, but I didn't get stuck at, at any plot points or story points. I mean, I knew I wanted, what I wanted to get down on the page in the end. I knew wh I had, where my goals were leading me. Right, um, right. But yeah, like you said, just the shifting points of view, that, that was the toughest part. Interesting. Now, you're in the process of publishing the book. Is that right? Yes. Right now, it's due out. Um, uh, my publisher said the, the goal is October 1st. Um, it might come out a little wow. sooner, um, but right now um, it's in the uh, editing phase. I'm actually um, going to have a Zoom meeting with my editor on Saturday, two days. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're, it's right now in the editing phase. We're finalizing the cover design. It's all, the cover is all pretty much done. We're just uh, uh, doing. Um, I have the one that you sent me out, which I'm, I'm gonna, which we just saw at the beginning of the video. Um, yeah. Is that going to change? You think, or uh, just maybe the colors? Um, yeah. It, uh, right now it's brown. I, I want like dark gray, black. Um, and maybe like a flash of red. Um, but other than that, the, I love the image. I love, um, I think yeah. the should do a great job with it. So the, the, the image I'm definitely going to keep. It, and, it, yeah. and I know I'm harping on it a little bit, but if it's a scary book that your cover, I don't want to get, well, they've, we've seen it, but it's a scary cover. It looks scary yeah. to me. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. So, <laughs> so, so what's it like, what's it been like, uh, how, how much interaction have you had with the editor so far? With the editor? Um, just a little bit. Um, okay. She uh, received the book. Um, maybe about a month ago. So I get, I get every time they just to, to sink in. I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, badger her. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what she comes up with tomorrow um, or Saturday in two days. I might, I might follow up with you. I know the first time, and, and I'm self-published, so I, I didn't go, I didn't have another, you know, I got to pick who my editor was. Um, but the very first time I went through it, it, it was, I don't even know what the word is. Because, you know, you fall in love with every word you've written and they have this other point of view. And there's just a lot of emotions you go through. I'm past it all now, but just the first time it was, it was, it, it was much more of an experience than I thought it was going to be. So I'll be curious to see how yours goes on Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I like the creative process. So I'm kind of looking forward to it, but um, it's kind of like going to like a proctology appointment. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that you're happy to have done. Right. But you don't yeah. necessarily want to do it. Right? Exactly. So what are you hoping um, when people, when the book is available in October or before, um, what are you hoping when someone reads it, that they kind of get out of it or that they think about it? 
Um, well, for one, I want them to be um, a little scared. Um, and not the scared where, um, you know, you see someone's like guts open up. Not like, gross. Like, yeah, are, not grossed like, out. Yeah. Uh, but that, you know, when you when you uh, put something down, you watch a movie, you read a book and you put it down, you go to sleep and you can't go to sleep because it's in your head. <laughs> I, I think I kind of want to, you know, I want to be that jerk that does that. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, well, and and I don't want to get too, you know, th- w- this is more on the, the process of writing. But, you know, we, we talked um earlier and you know you mentioned the book title but you've got some interesting characters that i thought it'd just be interesting to to have you explain how you decided you've got some historical characters and then some fiction well why don't you explain i don't don't want to explain it but you've done some really interesting things i have a couple that uh, some inspired by um um authors and some that's inspired by true events um so my two main protagonists um john doyle and thomas bram um and my two main inspirations for the book uh, the telling of the book are two of my favorite authors. And one is Arthur Conan Doyle, um, who of course wrote Sherlock Holmes. And this, you know, has some mystery elements. And that's where I got the name um, uh, John Doyle. So uh, as an homage to uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. And also uh, one of my favorite books and authors is Bram Stoker, who wrote uh, Jack. Yeah. And, um, and he also wrote in the same style as this book is the epistolary uh, style with, you know, letters and, and documents and things like that. So. Um, uh, Thomas Bram is, you know, um, the character that I name after him. Um, there are also some uh, like side stories that are based off true stories. Um, in France, uh, there was a aristocratic family, and uh, the um, the mom wanted the daughter to marry someone rich and famous, but she fell in love with a penniless lawyer. Um, to stop the wedding, um, she locked her in um, her attic. And kept her there for 25 years. Where she, yeah, she were they finally um, anonymous tip they found her. Um, she was you know emaciated, 65 yeah. pounds, living in filth, eating rats and uh, rotted food, and she went insane. Um, she yeah. died in an insane asylum. So I have a, a character based off that as well. Wow, that, that's such an interesting blend of you know historical research, kind of historical fiction, and then um, taking it in a new direction. I think that's I think that's interesting. So. Would you have any advice? Let's say there's someone, uh, you know, they're, they're watching this and it's interesting and, and they're maybe working on their own book uh, or they want to write a book or they've written one or two and they're just looking for tips. Would you have any advice uh, for anyone who's kind of starting on this journey? For the writing process, I would say, um, one, just write. Um, don't doubt it. If you have something in your head, just get it down. So just mm-hmm. write um, and keep on writing. Um, and always go with your gut. Um, uh, the, the one that uh, I grew up on a street um, in Philadelphia. Um, the um, I won't mention names, but um, one of the uh, kids across the street is older, you know, 10, 15 years older than me. Um, he's a published author. He wrote his several books. He's successful, very successful. Yeah. Uh, one of his books turned into a movie. So I reached out to him and wanted to see his process. And he, he asked me to show, um, send him a, a synopsis of um, my book that I was working on on time. And with the synopsis, he ripped it apart. He wanted me to change my entire writing style. Um, he told me that um, every story has a main protagonist, good guy, a main antagonist, bad guy. One's very good, one's very bad, black and white. There's a conflict in the middle, and in the end, the good guy wins every time. And that's mm. how every story should be told. And mm. I rejected that theory. I'm, I don't believe in that. Here's me, who had, at the time had, had nothing published at all. Yeah. And he, here's a successful author, and we just had different point of views. He suggested that I change my style, and um, I went with my gut. I mean, I got to write the way I write. If it doesn't, you know, no one reads it, it doesn't work, but it, it's right for me. I, I think that's I think that's the best advice I've I've, I've heard right I'm, and that's great yeah, we all get lots of advice in this right we even just we gave some advice but it might work for you but it might not um, it sounds to me I'm sure he's a wonderful writer but that sounds like like corporate product creation you know he, he's in, he's a machine and there's a way to do it and they're pumping it out now you make a lot of money but I, I don't have a fulfilling and, might, and I mean it's the, the He's very successful. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. But um, it's, to me, it's seen, seen that a lot of his writing is formulaic. And it's great. Um, it, you get the hook. You know, you get sucked in. You get the hook. Good guy wins. You feel good at the end. Um, but um, every story is not told that way. I mean, you go through history of writing. Some great works aren't that way. I mean, Frankenstein. Yeah. One of the best horror novels ever. I mean, who's the main protagonist in it? Um, the monster, no. Um, the... Um, Dr. Frankenstein, he's not that good of a guy. 
Um, but it's compelling, it's chilling, and it's, I mean, it's a wonderful book. If you've yeah. never read it, I, oh, I love oh, it. Oh, no, I've, I've read, I've read um, Frankenstein and Dracula. I mean, I mean I've, you know, I've, it's, been, it's been a while, but uh, I did, I really read a lot of that stuff maybe 10, 15 years ago. And they're, 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 they're oh, Count of Monte Cristo, that's another one that just. Oh, you know, I, I just read the unabridged, everyone's making fun of me. I pick up the unabridged versions, like 1,200 pages. I, I've read, oh, I, I, I don't know what one I read, but I know when it flipped to the middle, I was like, whoa. You know, and then the end is like, this isn't the it's it's not the story that, you know, if I've seen the movies and stuff and it's like, there's a lot more going on here than they're able to get in the movie. And there's an ending. I mean, there's definitely an ending. Um, oh, yeah. Is it truly happy? Probably not. I, I would argue. Yeah. No, I would argue there's nothing happy in the book. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but, it's, it, but it's wildly compelling. I mean, I, you know, I read the whole thing. I was glued to it. So, yeah. Uh, I, uh, so many great characters in the book. I, yeah. I, yeah, you can nail on the head on that one. That's one of my favorite books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. All right, well, Chad, look, it's a pleasure talking to you. I'll follow up with you um, and send me a note or something if the book comes out early. Um, okay. And we'll talk about, I'm always, one of the questions that I, I'm curious to ask you is, you know, when, once it comes out, how was it received and what surprised you about the reception and what people say and all that stuff? So I'm, sure. I'm looking forward to um, uh, hearing that. And it's interesting that we have the same writing style. So I think that's yeah, exciting. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, the whole process is just, uh, you know, mind blowing. So I'm Great. looking forward to every, every step of the way. Cool. All right, Chad. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thanks. Nice talking to you. Yep. Bye. bye. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.